What about some of the improvements, particularly about the extended life time and, and the operations time for some of our military uh, operations that uh, benefited because of your hard work? So first off, thank you for what you do. Um, I also saw, in fact, I was looking at the board over there with uh, some of the uh, suggestions that were made and, and heard that in a place like this that's obviously so heavily focused on, on welding, to hear about the strengths of the quality of the work that you do uh, along with the, uh, the positive safety record you do. Those sorts of things make places like this productive. And so thank you for your good work and your dedication. It's also good not only for Donaldson, but it's, I think it's a good representation of the work ethic that we have here in the state of Wisconsin. We appreciate that. Um, and it's interesting, Wisconsin is now at the highest employment level we've ever been at. You might not have heard about that uh, earlier this year, but in 2016, we now surpassed the 3 million employed level. That's the highest number of people that have ever been employed in the state of Wisconsin. We have what's called the labor force participation rate which is just a, simple, uh, a fancy way the federal government phrases the percentage of people working in our state. In our case, it's 68.8%, it's so almost 69%, and that's the sixth best in the country. In fact, that's a full six points higher than the national is. So that tradition that we have, strong work ethic here, is not just a theory, it's actually reflected in the numbers out there, and it's gotten better over the last few years. Like I said, it's remarkably better than the federal government. The unemployment rate, which is the opposite end in terms of employment, is, is down to 4.4%. That's six points lower than the national rate. And it's about the lowest it's been in nearly a decade and a half. And so those are all good things for people looking for jobs in our state. And hopefully as, as part of that, um, one of the things that it's good for, not only people looking for work, but it, it will help drive wages up for families and, and working individuals all across the state because we've seen wages go up at the same time the number of people employed in the state has gone up. That's a good thing not only for each of us as individuals working but for our families, our communities, and our state as a whole. Now one of the challenges we we're talking about as we we're walking through is is that when you have an employment level at the highest they've ever been and you've got unemployment at the lowest it's been in about a decade and a half it makes it hard to hire. And it's not just a challenge here at Baldwin Donaldson, or it's really a challenge all across the state. We are, us in Indiana, are the two best states in the country in terms of the number of people working in manufacturing. There's no states that have more people, a higher percentage of our overall economy in terms of employment is dependent on, on manufacturing than anybody else, us in Indiana. We're dependent on the measure, or one or two, uh, but, but close either way. That's good, we're proud of it. You look at our state flag, you know, one of the symbols on there is, is manufacturing. It's, it's the strong arm, it's the, the strength of, of manufacturing. It's right there on the state flag. And that's a proud part of our tradition, going back, like our birthday was just uh, on Sunday, 168 years that the state's been around. But it's not just a part of our past, it's a part of our future. With the work that you're doing, and other manufacturers like this around the state, we see even more opportunities in the future, but as many of you know, in fact, many of you who maybe have worked here for many, many years know that this is not the same company it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's not the same operations. The things have continuously improved as part of the process that makes it affordable to, to be working here. That's true in manufacturing as a whole in this state. And so part of our commitment, particularly when you've got manufacturing that's got a very high median age here in this state and across the country, is to be committed to bringing a whole new wave of people in and be interested in manufacturing. In fact, we were talking on the way in. We, we just, we've committed money in our state budget to start doing this fall academic and career plans as early as sixth grade in our public schools to start helping our students think early on, what are you good at, what are you interested in, and what kind of a career path do you want? And then we just put money in, in the, oh, the past budget, we just put money two months ago in to do more what's called dual enrollment programs. That's where we help our high schools do programs that get credit, not just for high school graduation, but get credit in our technical colleges. So whether it's at WITC or Chippewa Valley Technical College or any of the other great technical colleges that we have in the state, uh, that we see more young people look to that as an opportunity. And we're doing more with our youth apprenticeships. They've doubled over the last four years. 
more role with apprenticeships. Why? Because increasingly we see the good paying careers in the state are in areas that don't require a four year uh, undergraduate degree, but require something more than high school. Uh, whether it's a two year associate degree at our technical colleges, or it's an apprenticeship program or something similar to that, we understand that for businesses like Donaldson here and elsewhere across the state to thrive, we've got to continue to put in place the kind of well-trained, well-prepared, hard-working employees that are represented here today. That's our future. That's a given, but, but we're not just taking it for granted. We know we've got to nurture that. We've got to do something about that. So we're going to continue to put more resources into those areas, into apprenticeships, into our technical colleges, in the specialized areas, even our University of Wisconsin system, whether it's in engineering or other fields related to that, because we know how powerful that is. But it also takes help in our communities. And all of you who enjoy the work that you do can help us out as well. We need to have leaders, not only myself, but local leaders and others, remind people, I, I, I said that, I've actually told our president of the United States this, but I've said now for several years in our State of the State address, we need to honor our, our young men and young women who choose to go into careers to be highly skilled welders, CNC operators, and machinists, and others, just as much as we do those who choose to be lawyers and doctors. Because all of those professions are needed in our society today, and in fact, increasingly, particularly when you compare welding versus lawyers, there's a higher need for welders today than there are for lawyers. We have a, an overabundance of lawyers in many regards. I'm not a lawyer, so I guess I can say that. But, uh, uh, but we have a much higher demand uh, for welding positions here in our state. And I'm convinced that with employment at a high level that it is, the highest ever, unemployment now where it's been lowest in about a decade and a half, the challenge going forward is not just about workforce development or career development, it's really a form of economic development. Because I've heard from many an employer who said, not only do I need help filling some positions, might be a few welding positions, might be CNC operators, uh, might be a tool and die or other things like that, but I consistently hear not only about the need to fill those positions, but I hear from employers who say, I could add even more work on top of it. But to do that, I need to have confidence I can fill those positions. So that's what we're doing. The last thing I would just tell you is in addition to, to working in our schools and our technical colleges and our apprenticeship programs, the other area we're focusing on of late is to say that now that employment is as high as it is and unemployment is as low as it is, we can't afford to have anybody on the sidelines. What I mean by that is, some of you may have heard a little bit about this, but but I believe we have too many people who are physically and mentally capable of working, but who for years have been getting assistance from the state and the federal government. And if they're physically and mentally capable of working, I need to get them in the workforce. I need to get them in there because employers are looking for work. I need to get them in there because taxpayers don't want to pay for somebody who's able to work. And most importantly, I need to get them into the workforce because it's better for them. Because we're not doing anybody any good by, by having them be dependent on the government for the rest of life. I don't know about all of you, but I've got a, a reunion for my high school coming up this August. And I don't remember anybody in my class ever saying to me, hey, Scott, sign the yearbook, being good luck, becoming dependent on the government. That's just not who we are. That's not what's in us, particularly here in the Midwest. And so we're, I'm proud to say in our state, we've now changed the laws. We're in a bit of a fight in some of these things with the federal government. But we say if somebody is physically and mentally capable of working, particularly for those that don't have children in the household. You cannot get assistance like food stamps and other public assistance unless you're enrolled in one of our job training programs and then you're working, looking for work five days of the week and now we just added to that unless you can pass through a filter to make sure you can pass a drug test. Why? Because I know that if people have basic employability skills and they're drug free, I can find a job for anybody in the state of Wisconsin. That's something that's good for all of us. Because we need more people in the workforce. Employers are looking for folks out there. For taxpayers, we don't want to pay for folks who don't need it. We're good. We're decent people. We'll take care of somebody who's down and out. We'll help them get back up again. But by golly, if you're able to work, we're not going to pay for it forever. Uh, and we want to make sure people get the assistance to get back up on their feet again and get into the workforce. We're not done with that yet. Some of these things, like I say, take a little bit of a battle with the federal government. 
but we're going to do it because all of you who work hard every day you know, for yourselves and your families, you should expect the same thing out of your neighbor if they're, they're capable of working, and that's good for all of us. The last thing I would just say again is thank you. Thank you to all of you here. I, I think about it, I've got two sons, one who's 20 and one who's 21, and, and people often ask, you know, what motivates you to do what you do? I said, I'm not unlike most of my friends and neighbors, and that is I, I, I ran for office for two reasons. One day Matt, one day Matt, so those are my two boys. They've gotten older over the years, and one's already out working on his own, just started a new job just recently. But for me, the American dream is not just owning a home. It's not just starting a business or, or having a big car and all those things are nice. For me, the American dream, and I think for most of us, is working hard enough so that your children and your grandchildren can have a better life than the one you inherited, your parents and your grandparents. And so I want to thank all of you for putting in the work and the time and the efforts, not just for yourselves, but for your own children, for your own families, and for their generation and generations to come. Because we're better off today because of the labor our parents put in and our grandparents before us. We're going to be even better off as a state and as a country. We continue to keep that strong work ethic. We continue to say if you play by the rules, and you do what you're supposed to do and work hard in society, you can live the American dream every single day. I want to thank you for being shining examples of that and giving me a chance to stop by here today. God bless you. Governor Scott Walker, Donaldson Company, Baldwin, Wisconsin, May 31st, 2016. Paul Sealing, My Gateway News, reporting.